President Lagarde, it's, it's great to see you here in person indeed. Uh, thank you. Um, so, as you know, a previous generation of European policy maker tr makers tried to keep exchange rates of countries with very different underlying economic uh, conditions inside a target zone. It was called the exchange rate mechanism, and, and they failed. It was about the exchange rates, and the reason is that the policy allowed for one-way one bets and the speculators eventually forced the, the hands of governments. You remember the, the UK government had to leave on the famous Black Tuesday. Uh, they, they couldn't defend anymore the exchange rate. And, and so I, I wanted to ask you about this fragmentation, anti-fragmentation tool in, in this context. Why do you think and why does the government in council think that keeping asset prices within a band, keeping interest rates of, of different countries within a band with different fiscal conditions, etc., will be least, less difficult than it was to keep the exchange rates? Uh, when, when the markets coordinate in the same way against the band? And, and it's also very different to keep this band because we don't really know what the prices are. Mr. Visco says 150 basis points between Italia and, and German debt. I have no idea why this is a good or a bad band. I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, in order to, to have a band like this, we need a framework to be able to differentiate true credit risk from financial fragmentation induced speculation, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I don't really know what that framework is. And I wanted to, to explain to us what is the framework that you think we can use to think about what is this band, what are the right limits, why do we think we can defend it? And, and of course, if the bank ends up disagreeing with the market about what the band should be, then the risk is that the ECB ends up buying everything and not, <laughs> and not the market, because that's the only agent, sorry, uh, President, willing to buy. Thank you, Mr. Garricano, for your question. Um, you know, since a gradual process of policy normalization was initiated back in December 2021, the Governing Council has repeatedly pledged to act against resurgent fragmentation risks. And the ad hoc Governing Council that uh, we called, that I called uh, last week, uh, decided two actions on the basis of that uh, uh, repeated commitment that the Governing Council has made. First, to apply flexibility in reinvesting redemptions under the PEP portfolio. Uh, why is that? Well, because the pandemic has left some serious vulnerabilities uh, in the euro area economy, which are indeed contributing to the uneven transmission of the normalization of our monetary policy across the euro area countries. Second, in order to enrich uh, our toolkit and to include an anti-fragmentation instrument, uh, we mandated the relevant Eurosystem committees together with the ECB services to accelerate the completion of its design for consideration by the Governing Council. So I know that it is going to be terribly tempting by many of you and all the best ones in this room to actually ask me what kind of band, what kind of spread, what kind of speed, what kind of measurements, what kind of criteria, what kind of framework will eventually be decided? And I will not. I simply will not. So you can ask me uh, in, in, in any kind of versions uh, of, of that. And I respect very much the fact that it is, uh, it is a question that is on your mind and on many's mind. But work is underway at the moment. The Governing Council on an ad hoc, at this ad hoc meeting, tasked the committees to do the work, and the work is underway. But suffice to say that the fragmentation will be addressed if the risk of it arises. And it will be done so uh, with the appropriate instruments, with the adequate flexibility. It will be effective, it will be proportionate, it will be within our mandate. And anybody who doubts that determination will be making a big mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Follow up. Yes, thank you. Um, since since, since the, fall, the future is, is, is unknown, let's, let's think about the past. I mean, the, Mr. Draghi also had the idea of an anti-fragmentation tool, and he actually proposed an anti-fragmentation tool, which was the outright monetary transactions. And this tool is conditional, and as, as, as the president of our committee, Madam uh, Agli, said, it wasn't used. But it's there, and the market knows that, and it was, in fact, the tool that stopped the previous run. What is wrong with the existing tool? Um, do you think a tool 
in order to work has to be unconditional and and of course if it's unconditional one the governments just kind of uh, profit from this difficulty in distinguishing between true credit risk and, and, and fragmentation risk to to misbehave in some sense uh, what's what's wrong with the existing framework madame Lagarde? Well, mr garicano how we react uh, to the risk of fragmentation is going to depend on the situation that we face. And situations are different on each and every occasion. There is nothing wrong with OMT. And OMT is a tool, it belongs to the toolbox, and it can very well used if the circumstances warrant so. But we have demonstrated in the past over and over that we can actually design with the adequate level of flexibility and with adequate creativity, a tool that is going to address the specific case uh, that, uh, that we face. And we will do so again, as has been decided last week. But there is nothing wrong with OMT. 